Trouble at Home is the name of the episode, and Fatima has had it. Zach is pissed. Bryce and Angela are trying their best to mitigate any of the fallout. What's good, y'all? It's your good sis, Erica Vane, coming to you right here on Erica Vane TV with another Zatima video. In this video, we are breaking down episode number seven from season one, which recently premiered on BET Plus the same night that the sisters season five episode one premieres if you are in love with the sisters universe the characters involved and Zatima is your favorite couple then go ahead and hit that subscribe button turn on your bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my videos breaking down the show talking about the couples and get into the dope ass conversations that they spur and without further ado i'm just gonna go ahead and jump right on into it we are launched right into the next piece of drama from episode six in this episode as we open the episode with fatima looking deeper at the photo that was sent by belinda to her from the party clearly of zach you know dancing with deja now from there, Fatima decides that she's gonna pack her bags and go to Angela's house and we get to see, we get like a juxtaposition of Angela dealing with Fatima and Bryce dealing with Zach. So Bryce is driving Zach home and he's passed out in the front seat, but he does overhear a conversation between Angela and um, Bryce where Bryce is like, all right, I'm gonna slow down and I'm gonna take my time trying to get him home because Fatima doesn't actually want to run into him on her way out. But that doesn't actually work out because it's almost perfectly timed as when Bryce is pulling up with Zach, Fatima is walking out the door. This creates the most awkward, weird, unexpected, but so very necessary confrontation between Zach and Fatima outside their house. And I'm saying that it's necessary because I really feel like you don't really know someone until they are mad at you. And this is the maddest that we have seen Zach at Fatima and Fatima at Zach. In the over the course of this confrontation, both start to express their feelings. Zach, because he is like really, really drunk, like ridiculously drunk, he um, he kind of like expresses a little bit more openly and belligerently exactly how he feels. We really get to understand how deeply hurt he is, which we under we got that honestly from when he was first shown the photo. However, the way that he is talking to Fatima, lashing out at Fatima verbally, being dismissive, like he literally fixes his mouth to say, and make sure that you left your key. I literally was watching this scene in utter disbelief because I was just like, Zach, be mother for real, sir. Like, I get that you mad. I get that you didn't want her to meet up with, um, with Ian, I get that you asked her kind of like in a, a, a very passive aggressive way and she ain't completely come clean, but also be for real because you're tripping right now. She has done this one thing and you have decided to jump your ass off the deep end. This is this is the most drunk that we have seen you. This is the angriest we have seen you. This, this is the most like past Zach like we have ever seen you. Like we're literally getting an illumination of what it was actually like to date you while you was with Karen and running around. The only thing that did not happen that used to happen with the relationship that you had with Karen is that not only would you go out, have a good time, push up on women, but you would also sleep with them women. And a very great question question comes up by way of Angela and it's also in the back of the mind of the audience and throughout this episode because at the end of the day you did not sleep with Deja not because of you you didn't sleep with Deja because Bryce came and dragged your ass about that party and then you want to stand outside this damn duplex and cut a fool and talk about leave the key and act like Fatima is just so disloyal this that and the third meanwhile she has never done anything like this to you yes she could have been forthcoming about the whole Ian thing but it's so much more to that and the fact that the matter is and a shout out to everyone who has joined me on my lives this week i have been live on twitter spaces i have been live right here on youtube and we've been having such great conversations around what's happening in the, in the um sisters universe but specifically with zatima because we brought up like shout out to um shout out to destiny who agree with me in that Zach was not ready to handle the news about Ian, right? Like if we go back and we talk about how Zach really 
kind of leans into his narcissist bag and he centers himself in things that don't even have anything to do with him and because he lacks a certain level of emotional intelligence he winds up again centering himself in places that in things that he actually shouldn't just because he's ill-equipped to be able to handle it it was blaringly clear in this confrontation outside this damn duplex because she literally says okay i should have told you uh ian has cancer and i met up with him oh then he responds y'all oh everybody got cancer now when they losing somebody zach be in for real like are you serious right now i know that you drunk but are you serious right now I was watching this scene in like utter shock and disbelief because it was very much so similar to when Aaron's wife unalived herself right in front of Karen and then he shows up at the at the hospital and he's more concerned about how Karen actually knew the girl versus Karen watching somebody blow their own brains out. It's literally the same sentiment. Now everybody got cancer when they lose somebody. Zach, please go shut your drunk ass up because this is this is not a good look for you, sir. You left out this house ashy and with no deodorant because you were so pissed and passive aggressive and you coming back in here a drunkard and doing exactly too much and about to lose your whole relationship behind some bullshit. Go sleep it off. I said what I said, y'all. Like, I get it. Y'all want to cape for, for Zach and y'all want to give him a pass. And Zach is trying and he's doing better. And this, that, the third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, it's time to hold yourself a damn accountable. Because you're finally in this relationship that you so-called love so much. That is so much better than anything that you ever had. With a woman that you have never experienced. And you know what? You know what, Zachy? When you walk into some extraordinary sh you got to step up and be an extraordinary person because ordinary and mediocre people don't get to benefit off of extraordinary sh And that's something that I had to learn the hard way. I'm out here and I want a well-to-do man, a confident man, a dude who doesn't need validation from his friends. And when I sat down and thought about it, I'm like, yeah, I just want a little regular Negro like that's going, you know, love me down, yada, yada, yada. No, Erica, actually, you want an extraordinary person, baby. The stuff that you're looking for is some extraordinary sh The stuff that Zach and Fatima are trying to cultivate within their relationship is extraordinary. So you can't just be regular. You can't just go back to regular ass toxic ideals and problematic mindsets. You cannot just be a regular person because you are trying to live out your life and and, and truly experience and benefit and, and flourish in some extraordinary, sh your relationship is irregular. Your love is irregular. And Zach, you can no longer just be regular. You need to be better. Time to grow the hell up. And shout out to Fatima because I made a note of some of the dialogue that really stuck out to me in this episode. And when she said, every time you get mad at me, the first thing that you're going to do is go try to fuck some chick. I was like, well, where the lie? Where is the lie? Oh, what it look like? I glitter, huh? Because I actually didn't go through with this. Bryce pulled you out of there. Be clear. I'm going to need Zach to really humble himself. And by the, by the end of the episode, or like as we move on through the episode we do get to see a little bit more of a humbling so i'm going to go ahead and speak to that but i want to make sure i'm going in order so i can give y'all the energy that i was feeling while i was watching it but be clear i'm going to be very thorough and we're going to adjust fire as things shift Whew. again angela makes the point of telling um fatima once she gets back to angela's house how she really could have told Zach and probably should have told Zach about meeting up with Ian. But she also affirms to her like, girl, you aren't wrong in your anger and frustration for seeing Zach in that photo at the party because she not. And I, like I said, she asked a very real question. If Bryce didn't get to him, would he have slept with that stripper? Inquiring minds want to know, but I think we actually know the answer. Well, I do agree because I think Destiny said this as well in the Twitter spaces that we, when we had a conversation. Deja probably would not have slept with him because she was seemingly very protective of him and just appreciative to be able to get this place from him. Um, but the real answer to the question is if it was up to Zach and he uh, could sleep with Deja, he would have done it without Bryce or Deja interfering argue with y'all's mamas because I'm not going to argue with y'all about it. And while Angela is getting Fatima together at her place, Bryce is drinking and chatting with Zach at Zach's place. And it's so interesting because so much happens over the course of this conversation. They move from the kitchen upstairs to the bedroom and then Zach is going to go get in the shower and we're going to talk about that child because my God. But I say a lot of things interesting happen, but the number one thing that pops up is Zach talking about um, Karen. It's the I can't keep Karen's name up my mouth for me. 
But I'm not even gonna go there because I'm not about to argue with y'all again. Argue with y'all's mamas. He brought Karen up, and he also he references Karen as the last time that he got super drunk like this was because Karen got with Aaron. And I'm guessing he's doing a callback to like when he popped up at the damn hotel or whatever. But overall, that really messed with him. And I just can't, like, I just can't with Zach in the whole every two episodes he brings up Karen. Moving on, Zach getting naked in front of Bryce would have been innocent and part of course for homies, but it's very clear that something is stern in Bryce as all of this is going down. And just like that, Bryce has become one of the most interesting characters in the series. His battle with what he saw, how he feels, and what to do next is so clear and nuanced. So shout out to the actor who plays Bryce because he did a phenomenal job in the scene while Zach is like drunk as hell, hell bent on taking a shower because he is pissed at Fatima but knows that Fatima comes back and smell this girl on him or smell this girl in his bed or whatever that's on him that it's going to be even more trouble. So he's hell bent on taking a shower and he gets bucky naked in front of Bryce. And Bryce damn near don't know what to do. <sighs> well, he, he he keeps it cute. And then he takes us behind back to Angela's house, hard as a rock, in which Angela has to deal with it. Child, Tyler Perry, go ahead then. If you just if you needed us to just be patient and get you the episode, get us the episode seven, then you should have just said that. Cause it's this episode, y'all, that really is popping off in the series for me. All the episodes leading up to this have been cool, but this has been, I think, the most solid episode. And I am recording this before I watch episode eight. Uh, but this episode has kept me engaged from start to finish. I was on the edge of my seat. I couldn't really predict what was going to happen next. And I was uncomfortable, like, but again, still engaged. So shout out to, shout out to Tyler. I think this episode was definitely like a 9.8 out of 10. All right, the next morning, Zach is reeling as he realizes that Valerie already got the lease signed and he has to try to stop Deisha from moving in. But he also realizes that he should have waited for Fatima to just tell him. Like, he was mad, but that's his girl and she gonna be back. It's so interesting how the first person to see Zach that day is Bryce. And it's super clear. If it wasn't clear for us the night before, then it's super clear now why he has been so helpful, supportive, and seemingly Zach's knight in shining armor at every turn. This is getting messy, chat. And then for Fatima, the morning isn't going as well either, or isn't going well either, as she has resolved to move back into her old place, get all her stuff out of storage. And she's going to start the day by going to go get her stuff from Zach because she's already called the movers. Girl, Fatima is not about that bullshit. She is not playing no games. The fact that she came down them steps at Angela's house and she's like, yeah, I'm about to go get my stuff. I already called the movers. I'm going back to my place. I'm like, damn, Fatima, you ain't even going to have a conversation before you make all these decisions. But go off because she has spoke to it like at the in the fight outside the duplex as well as that morning the next morning she's like I am in an emotionally raw place like I just am overwhelmed emotionally I can't handle it so I completely understand like it does seem a bit harsh and rash for her to just run back to her place but she needs to be able to create some space and some distance and if Zach is going to be out here acting a monkey ass fool just because she needs that space and distance then maybe this is the best bet for them to take a step back and then be able to move forward after she's able to process the things that she got going on her end I ain't mad at her for doing it. Now, um, before all hell starts to break loose, just a little bit, um, Angela has a moment as well where she reveals to Fatima about, you know, feeling uncomfortable and thinking something was up with Bryce, uh, with him coming in and being hard as a rock, completely aroused when he came in. She said that that wasn't normal of him, but, you know, she did what she had to do. And Fatima, like a good homegirl, you know, passes it off like, yeah, it, it shouldn't it should be anything to worry about. However, these are definitely the seeds of like something is going on with Bryce. Bryce is given all types of bisexual. He is sexually attracted to Zach. And when Angela finds this out, I'm, I feel so bad for mama because I know it's going to be heartbreaking. Now, all hell breaks loose or like a little bit, kind of, because Belinda shows up and Belinda walks into Angela's house talking, calling Fatima all types of dummies and Fatima standing right there pouring her coffee. Fatima, that coffee should have ended up in Belinda's face. That coffee cup should have went over her head. Like her little press and curl would have been all types of a kinky nappy because I would have her up right there in that damn kitchen. There is no way that Belinda is like literally running off of this infinite amounts of audacity. She needs her ass beat. 
The one warning shot was not enough. She needs her ass completely beat. And while Belinda's over here wreaking havoc at Angela, Zach's brother shows up and he's wreaking havoc over at Zach's house. He wants $10,000. We also come to find out over the course of that conversation that he's the reason why Zach went to jail, but he need to be grateful because he only did three years. Meanwhile, um, his brother did 10. Sir, go to hell. Go straight to hell. Do not play us go. Do not collect two hundred dollars with your goofy ass. Like I cannot. And Belinda, if you want to, if you want to bump uglies with somebody, Zach brother look like he available. Like, won't y'all go ahead and occupy your time and minutes on each other and on each other? I don't see nothing wrong. And leave Zach and Fatima the hell alone. Again, pointing out dialogue that stuck out to me. This wasn't the best dialogue, but the fact that he said, you're my brother, you're supposed to look out for me. Sir, you are the older brother. What are we actually talking about? I did three years in prison behind some dumbass scheme that you had that got us both locked up. And you mean to tell me now I'm supposed to look out for you? Zach literally like took it as much as he could. He was like chill, he was calm. Clearly he's still hung over. He's reeling about what he gonna do about Deja. Fatima turned her phone off, she ain't answering. So he is processing a lot. But then he comes to his breaking point. He like, how the hell am I supposed to be looking out for you when I've been broke for the last three years and I ain't heard from you or mama. Now all of a sudden that I'm up, y'all got my phone number. You know where I live and you need some money. What about when I need it? I was running around here on a damn bike chasing after Karen, not paying rent, doing Doing all types of goofy shit and none of y'all showed up i mean he ain't say all that about karen but i'm gonna go ahead and throw it in there zach because you should have said it i was down bad and y'all asses was nowhere to be found so here's my ass to kiss because no but zach turns out to you know give him the ten thousand dollars and i hate that for him before the episode ends fatima's on her way to zach's house to get her stuff and she gets a call from ian's mama who just clearly loves her down is excited that she's going to be in their lives and support them through his transition and wants her to come to dinner yeah y'all episode seven did not disappoint let me know in the comment section down below what did you think about the episode how are you feeling about the team of the series thus far what are your favorite moments your least favorite moments i want to know all of that and more in the comment section down below if you made it all the way to the end of the video and you have yet to subscribe to the channel go ahead and hit that subscribe button give me a like as well and then turn on your bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my other breakdowns it's your good sis you know to talk tv with i know that you like this video let's get into episode eight come on it's coming up next Click the video right here.